What is the universe? The universe is everything. The stars, the planets, the galaxies, particles, matter, and energy. Um, most of them in the form of dark energy and matter. It's believed to be about 13.8 billion years old. And it's expanding, and its rate of expansion is accelerating. There are many theories about the ultimate fate of the universe, but little to none is known about what happened before. We don't know if there was nothing, we don't know what created it, uh, was it created by chance, and is this the first and only universe? We don't know the answer to any of these questions. So today, we're going to start with what we do know. Today's first episode is on the Big Bang Theory and the first picosecond. Alright, welcome to the first episode. Now, the last episode was more of, I guess, an introduction into the show, but today is, uh, I guess, like the real first episode where we actually talk about, you know, some scientific ideas and stuff. But before we jump into that, I also want to say that I know that this episode might piss off people that have different faiths and beliefs, um, and that's definitely not the, the goal that I wanted. I basically started with this, not because it's the current uh, scientific belief that we have, but because it goes back the farthest. So basically, once we get to when Christianity started to arise and when they believed that Jesus lived and um, those kind of ideas, I'm going to get into all the different religions, too, and talk about all of them. Um, I believe it's good, though, to if you, even if you don't believe something, to at least learn about it so that it kind of fuels the debate. So uh, with that all you know, out of the way, I can get into the first picosecond of the Big Bang. So basically, I'm going to go by in stages, and in stage one, you have the Planck Epoch, and that's at zero seconds. And basically, that's another thing I was going to say too, was the Big Bang isn't telling how the universe started, um, like some people think. I, I mean, at least from what I've been able to see, there's no, you know, two particles or two, you know, little matter things that, that exploded and started making the universe. It doesn't really seem to talk about that. It's more about what happened after the Big Bang and what kind of made the universe into um, the state that we know it is today. So basically, the the Planck Epoch, which is at zero seconds, is a time when the universe was so hot and small that no matter particles could exist. So hot and small that we actually don't even understand physics at these temperatures and sizes. Like, uh, if you have physics, to go even smaller, you go to quantum physics. And this, apparently, is so small that we don't... It's smaller than quantum physics. So we don't... It's, we don't really have um, an understanding of how it works. This is all kind of speculation. So I think to get into the, all of these ideas, I think I should start with the four fundamental forces, which basically is the strong force, um, which is the strongest of the four forces. That's why it's called the strong force. And basically what that does is it, it just holds together a nucleus. I'm not going to get into all the like the tiny details about it, like the mathematical equations. I'm just going to you know, generally explain it because I think it will get way too convoluted and um, confusing, especially over a podcast. But anyway, so the next one is the weak force. Um, that's responsible for radioactive decay, which plays a role in nuclear fission, a uh, process that powers nuclear power plants today. The next is the electromagnetic force. It holds atoms and molecules together. And then gravity. It's uh, all things with mass that are brought towards one another. That That's probably the most self-explanatory one. That one, I think, the strong and the weak force. But um, So basically, at the time of this Planck Epoch, all matter and energy of the entire visible universe is contained in an unimaginably hot, dense point a billionth the size of a nuclear particle. This is the early stage of the Big Bang, before the time passed was equal to a Planck time. Um, I know that this is all kind of confusing and a lot of information thrown at first, so I'm going to try to like break it down a little bit. Basically, a Planck time is 10 to the negative 43 seconds. It's the smallest measurement of time that we have. This is before that. <laughs> so it's it's really confusing and like it's really speculation because we can't really look that at that small of a time frame. I, I like and to me that's kind of stupid anyway. It's like there, I mean there's so much stuff that happened then, but it's like why are we trying to look at something that happened before 10 to the negative 43 seconds? That's just insane to me. But anyway, so because of this heat um, and that how small the universe is at this point, the four fundamental forces that I just described are presumed to have been united into one force. 
So all the four of them, they're in this giant super force, which is kind of crazy to me, but yeah, that's another thing. I'm probably just going to make fun of all these. Um, I mean, that this is what we think happened, but it's all speculation, and I know that's kind of like my way to to learn about it is kind of get as much information as I can and then make jokes about it. That's how I learn, I guess. So basically the Planck epoch ends with the separation of gravity from the other three forces. So there's this, all these huge super forces and then gravity's like, you know, the universe needs me and he just fucking bolts, um, like some superhero. And then we go to stage two, which is the grand unification epoch, which is 10 to the negative 43 seconds. So now we passed a Planck time. So, while the universe is still at an infinite simul size, and that's what it says, I didn't fucking make that up, it just means small as fuck. I looked it up, and it's, I, I hate when they, when they put, like, sizes like that. But anyway, so the, the universe cools down at this point to 10 to the 32 Kelvin, which is absolute hot. Like, it didn't even say absolute, I, I looked it up. I looked up 10 to the 32 Kelvin, and I found out that it was absolute hot, which is just hot as fuck. Like, if, if you're going swimming, absolute hot is way fucking hotter than that basically like if you were having soup and you know like when you when you're having soup and you burn your mouth this is way hotter than that so the grand unification epoch begins with the end of the Planck epoch and the separation of gravity from the other three forces remember i said you know gravity's like the universe needs me and he just fucking leaves and so i guess the other three forces are united as the electronuclear force and that's what the grand unification epoch is gravity leaves the other three forces combined and then this epoch ends with the separation of the strong force from the weak and electromagnetic forces triggering cos cosmic inflation. So if we start, if I go back to the Planck epoch, you have these four forces that are combined together, then gravity leaves, and then the other three forces combine. And then eventually the strong force leaves, and then the weak and electromagnetic forces combine and become the electro uh, weak force. And then, uh, so that triggers cosmic inflation, which is basically when the universe just expanded rapidly in, into kind of like, it's not the size of the universe that we have today, but that's when it got really fucking big, basically. So stage three is the inflationary epoch, which is, um, happened at 10 to the negative 36 seconds after the Big Bang. So according to inflation theory, the universe underwent an extremely rapid exponential, ex, sorry, exponential expansion thought to be over 62 trillion miles long. That's fucking huge. But anyway, so it's thought to have been triggered by the end of the Grand Unification Epoch when the strong force separated from the electronuclear force. One theory was a scalar field called the inflation field. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what I'm assuming the scalar field. As the field settled into the lowest energy state throughout the universe, it generated a repulsive force that led to a rapid expansion of space. This expansion explains various properties of the current universe that would otherwise be difficult to account for without such an inflationary epoch. So this is kind of just a way to explain, um, I guess, holes in the theory itself. So we came up with this theory that, you know, helps fill in some gaps. The inflationary epoch ends around 10 to the negative 32 seconds when the inflation when the inflatten field i think that's how you pronounce that too decayed into ordinary particles in a process called reheating at which point ordinary big bang expansion began uh, and continues today the time after this is considered to be the earliest meaningful time after the big bang the huge potential energy of the inflatten field was released at the end of the inflation epoch, populating the universe with a hot, dense mixture of quarks, antiquarks, and glu gluons. There are states of matter existing at extremely high temperatures and or densities. They're basically things that existed when the universe was so hot, so that they're not really around today. Um, it's kind of like the first, I guess, um, the first states of matter that we really have. And the fourth... The fourth, and I think last one that we have for this episode, is the Electro-Weak Epoch, which began at 10 to the negative 32 seconds. The Electro-Weak Epoch is a period in the evolution of the early universe when the temperature was high enough to merge the electromagnetic and weak forces into the Electro-Weak Force. This epoch and the following are much less speculative and better understood. The, re the ones before that were just like kind of theories into the theory itself to explain what we think happened when you know, at these very, very short time periods. 
Particle interactions at this phase were energetic enough to create large numbers of exotic particles, including W and Z pro bosons and Higgs bosons. Um, by the way, if I'm saying these wrong or pronouncing them wrong, you can just let me know and I'll, I'll fix it in a future episode. Um, I think that's how you pronounce them, though. As the universe expanded and cooled, interactions became less energetic, and when the electroweak epoch ended, as the universe was around 10 to the negative 12 seconds, which is one picosecond, the W and Z bosons created ceased to be created. The remaining W and Z bosons decayed quickly, and the weak interaction be became a short-range force in the following quark epoch. So that's that's where we end this actual episode. That's that's the first picosecond. Um, I want to go through a short summary though, that kind of can can water this down and make it a little bit easier to understand. Because I know that that's so much information, it's probably just really confusing. So basically, from the start, the universe is really, really small and really, really hot. So you have the four fundamental forces that are combined. Then basically all this is is just all the forces kind of leaving. Gravity starts, leaves, becomes like some superhero or whatever. Um, that's the way I think of it to make me remember. And then after that, the strong force leaves. Um, and, and then the weak and the electromagnetic force combine to become the electroweak force. And when that happens, that makes the universe expand, like, a lot. You know, you've heard this, you know, trillions and trillions of miles. But um, after that, then the electro-weak forces, the one, the electromagnetic and the weak force, when they combined, made um, these kind of exotic particles um, that were only allowed to exist because the universe was so hot. So as the universe cooled down, these, these particles ceased to exist. They started to decay, and the weak interaction is now a force in the next epoch, which is um, at a point, like we're at the very, very early universe right now. So in the next episode, with the quark epoch in the early universe, a lot of the physics and the, the quantum physics, they're actually things that apply today that we can use. A lot of the, the stuff in this episode applies to, to ideas that we don't really have we don't have the ways to explain them yet, so a lot, a lot of it's really confusing, and and a lot of theories that we still haven't really figured out. Scientists are still working on it today, um, at the, or at least at this point in recording. So the next episode is going to be a lot more, like I think, less theory and more. We have stuff to prove it. But that's where I wanted to end this episode was with the first picosecond. I hope it wasn't too, you know, confusing. But I try to slow it down and, and try to re-explain things and make it simpler. I'm not going to go into, like, who discovered all of these ideas. Um, because, like I said before, when I, when I eventually get to these points in history, when, say, like, in the 1800s when, you know, the guy discovered the Planck uh, unit of time, that, that at that point of time is when I'll get to it. So, uh, as we go on through history, we'll start talking about discoveries that people made to help them understand the world. So, thank you guys for listening to this first episode. I hope it, I hope you guys liked it. You can leave me some feedback um, and let me know if it was too confusing. If you wanted me to like, you know, kind of make it easier to understand, I, I might be able to make another episode, kind of redo this one if it didn't turn out that good. As we go through like past these really really intense science parts and you start going more into when the Earth was created and. And when people start coming around, I think it'll be a lot more easier to understand because it'll just be about people, which is something that we actually understand a lot better. <laughs> so as we get to those episodes, it'll be a little bit better. But anyway, thank you guys again for watching Down the Line. In the next episode, like I said, we'll be going to the Quark, the Quark Epoch, and getting into the early universe itself, and hopefully just finishing up the Big Bang soon. So see you guys next time. <laughs>